Good afternoon. Let's deal with our 2022 exam paper. Question one, which we're also using it as a revision lesson for. Um, differentiation techniques. So we are dealing with the 2022 paper. It started off with 1.1 z is equal to e to the power x minus y times cos of x minus y and determine dz over dx. So you can see how the d is written. You know that this means partial differentiation. Okay. So what do we want to do here? How many marks was this? This was three marks. <coughs> Right, it was three marks determined dz over dx. Right, so now um, we are dealing with multiplication. Okay, this is partial differentiation, but we are dealing with a multiplication. Right, so. As I was explaining, it was this is multiplication. Now, when it's multiplication, we use the product rule. Okay. When it's division, we use the quotient rule. Now, we do not use the product rule unnecessarily here in N6. What do I mean? What do I mean? Remember that this is partial differentiation. So, let's take a simple example first. If I had Z is equal to x squared plus y cubed and if I differentiate with respect to x so if I go dz dx when you differentiate with respect to x you treat any other variable that appears here as a number so the derivative of x squared is 2x and this is treated as a number so you imagine y cubed as 2 cubed, 10 cubed or anything so the derivative of a number alone will be zero. Right, so, um, sorry, why am I writing it here? 2x plus zero. Now, um, if I have to go dz dy, differentiate partially with respect to y, then I will treat x as if it is a number, like 2 squared or 3 squared, you know derivative of a constant is 0 and then you differentiate this is y so that's the variable y so that will be 3y squared okay now or if I had z is equal to let's take an example involving multiplication now let's go x squared times sine y okay let's go x squared times sine y now in a case like this, this is multiplication. So with multiplication, we use the product rule. What happens if I use the product rule? Let's use the product rule. So I'm going dz all over, let me go for dx again. So the product rule, how does the product rule work? If we call this f and we call that g, then the product rule is copy down the first Differentiate the second plus copy down the second, differentiate the first. That is a product rule. So now, what is the first step? The first will be x squared. <clears throat> when I say you have my first um, um, factor is x squared, then g prime now. What is g? g represents sine y. So we are differentiating with respect to x and that's sine y. So sine y represents a y represents a number, it's like sine of 30 degrees or something. So what is the derivative of a number? Zero. Because we are differentiating partially with respect to x. Plus g. What is g? The original g, the second uh, factor there is sine y. That's, this is not being differentiated, it's just part of the formula which you have to copy down. There's the differentiation part here. F prime, so what is the derivative of x squared? Right, so now, 
Zero times anything here? Zero. Two x times sine y is two x sine. <clears throat> so this is the product rule. Now it is unnecessary to do this. It's necessary for you to do it when you are practicing, when you're learning for the first time. But in the exam, it is unnecessary for you to waste time and use the product rule when both term or both factors do not have x here. This one has the variable x. Does sine y have a variable x here? No. So you do this. You got z is equal to x squared times sine. <coughs> The second one has no variable x, so remember you will treat sine y as a number. So if this was a number, it would have been x squared times, let's just call that number k. You follow? Which is the same as just kx squared. Because k represents a number or a constant. So if I differentiate now with respect to x dz dx, is it necessary for me to use the product rule here? Yeah? It's unnecessary. What's the derivative of kx squared? It's 2 times k times x to the power 1 and you're done. <coughs> so going back here, my z is equal to, this is actually sine y, which is a constant, times x squared. So there's my k here, which is sine y. Can you see that? So now, dz, dx. So I know there's my sine y, which is a number. So it's going to be 2 times, just like what I did here, you can see that. 2 times k, which is sine y times a little uh, times just x So, there's your answer. There's the same answer. It's just that you need to get used to it because it's something different from implicit differentiation that you did in N5. Right, so be careful. So now, it's your choice at the end of the day. It's unnecessary to use a product rule for this example because this factor does not have the variable x. Now let's have a look at the latest exam paper 2022. We have z is equal to e to the power x minus y. So there's my f now. Can you see that? Times cos of x minus y. Now in this case both factors have x and y, x and y. They both. You're clear with that? So if I'm differentiating with respect to x now, if I want to differentiate partially with respect to x, so then I'm going to go d over dx or dz over dx. It's actually d over dx of z, same thing. So I want to differentiate this with respect to x. x appears as an exponent in the first factor, x also appears in the second factor, so we do not have any choice. We have to use the product rule. You're clear with that? So now this is equal to, this is going to be the product rule, which is f g prime plus g f prime, where f is defined as the first factor here and g the second. So let's do that. So now, what is f? Remember, f is the first part here, your function of x e to the power x y. So I will copy that down. e to the power x minus y times times now g prime. How do we differentiate g? So remember that. If y is equal to k cos f of x, then y dy over dx, the derivative of k cos f of x is minus k sine f of x times f prime x. This is from our n5. In fact, from our n4. 
Okay. So we are going to be dealing with cos. What else are we dealing with? We are also dealing with y is equal to k e to the power f of x. So when we differentiate something like this, the derivative will be k e to the power f of x times f prime x. So that's the information that we need. The product rule is just a formula. Write down the first, differentiate the second, plus write down the second, differentiate the first. If you forget it, it's given to you. The main thing is the n4 here, you can see. The n4, differential calculus. So now, write down the first, differentiate with the second. What is the second? The second is cos of x minus y. But we need to find the derivative of cos. So what is the derivative of cos? There's a gem. The derivative of cos is, you can see that, it is minus sine of whatever function you have here in brackets. So it's minus sine of the function of x here times, times f prime. Here. Can you see that? So times, what is f prime? Now I go inside. I must remember that this is partial differentiation and I'm differentiating with respect to x. So let's start with the first one. We've got the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, let me just write that clearly. So that's 1 and that's a 0. So that's my f. This part here is g prime plus g. What is your g? g is the second part here, which is cos of x minus y times f prime. So what was f? f was e to the power x minus y. So the derivative of e to the power x minus y you know the derivative of an exponential function is equal to the exponential function e to the power x minus y. So there I am here. Times, <coughs> times now, times the derivative of the exponent. So you can see that. There's the exponent is f of x. This is f prime. So times the derivative of the exponent. Remember that this is partial differentiation. So, when we differentiate with respect to x, that will be just 1. When you differentiate with respect to y, that will be 0. Are you clear with that? You just need to be very careful. There's nothing difficult about this. But be careful that you don't mix up the concept of implicit differentiation, where you multiply by dy over dx. We did that in n5 compared to partial differentiation here in n6. Right, so let's simplify this here. Now, 1 minus 0 is 1, times negative is negative, so that's minus e to the power x minus y, times sine of x minus y, there's nothing more to do here. That's 1 minus 0, which is 1, times the 1 there, which is a 1 cos. Let's put the e first, e to the power x minus y, it doesn't matter which one you put first. You don't have to go and take out a common factor or anything here, it's all unnecessary because they only ask you for the first derivative, okay, not the second derivative. So that is our three marks. Make sure. Okay, getting back to this example, I was just corrected, and it wasn't dz over dx, it was dz over dy. Now let's see, what's the difference between dz over dx and then dz over dy? So now I'm differentiating with respect to y, I will treat x as a constant. So now, what will be different here? Okay, so I had dz dx before. So now it's the same product rule because both both um, factors have y. So you write it's f g prime plus g f prime. So the product rule is copy down the first, which is e to the power 
uh, x minus y, differentiate the second. The derivative of cos of x minus y is minus sine of x minus y. Now, I'm differentiating with respect to y. So I'm differentiating with respect to uh, y. So I will treat x as a number. Are you clear with that? So that will become 0 here. Yeah? The derivative of x will be 0. And the derivative of minus y will be minus 1. Alright. So let's write down the f g prime. The only part that changes is last part here. Plus g which is cos of x minus y. Here's my cos of x minus y, that does not change. Times f prime. So what is f prime? If f, f is this, so e, the derivative of e to the power uh, xy is e to the sorry, e to the power x minus y times now I'm differentiating partially with respect to y. So I'm differentiating with respect to y, I will treat x as a number. So the derivative of this x is 0 and the derivative of minus y will be minus 1. Okay, what's going to change here is that a negative times a negative will be positive there. And a positive times a negative will be negative. So that was my I went and worked out dz over dx. But anyway, we can use that as practice now. So now you've got dz over dx and you've got dz over dy. So that, that was your three marks. We now deal with the next one, parametric equation. Our next question here, 1.2. Let's read it. <clears throat> the parametric equations of a curve are given as so now what are parametric equations? You've got two equations. <clears throat> you, it's given as x in terms of t and then you have y in terms of t. Okay. What do we want to find? We want to find dy over dx, the first derivative, when t is equal to pi over 3. How are we going to do that? Because this is not y with respect to x. This is not even y with respect to x. Yeah, it's y with respect to t, x with respect to t. So, from the given information, let's write that down. Let's write down equation 1. x is equal to 1 plus tan t. What can I do here? I can just find dx dt. Notice now, this is not partial differentiation. They just ask you straight dy with dx. So this is our normal differentiation. So I've got x with respect to t. I'll find dx over dt. What is the derivative of 1? 0. What is the derivative of 10? The derivative of 10 is 6 squared of t times the derivative of 1t here, which is 1. Alright. So that is my first equation. Second one, y is equal to sec squared of t. What can I do about y in terms of t? I can find dy over dt. So I'm going to go dy over dt. So it's all our n5 table of derivatives here. And the chain rule, you can see that. Now I'm saying chain rule. How do I know chain rule? Why? Why did I say chain rule? Because of the power 2 here. Can you see that? When you have a power, which is a number, and you know your base is a variable, then you know it's a chain rule. So this sec squared t is actually sec of t all squared. It's best to read it like this here. This is not a good way to read it. Read it like this because when you write it like this here and read it with brackets, and you have a power there, then you, you, then you will not uh, forget that it will be the chain rule. Right, so now, remember, what's the number in front if you cannot see? It's a positive 1. So it's a chain rule. The chain rule is going to be 1 times 2, which is 2. Then I've got my sec of t. 
differentiate the exponent first. So 2 minus 1 will be 1. So we deal with the power, that's done. Time rules. Now we move inside the brackets and you focus only on what's inside here. Differentiate it and write down the answer outside the bracket. So what is the derivative of sec? The derivative of sec will be sec t times tan t times the derivative of 1t which is just 1 which is now equal to 2 sec times sec that will be sec t all squared times the tan t sec times sec is sec squared if we simplify it now we have gx of the dt we have dy of the dt the question requires dy over dx okay so we need to find dy over dx what do we have how do we use this information we got our dy over dt now yeah i got dx over so if I write down t times dx over dt is not going to help. What should I do? I should take this dx over dt, dt and invert it. So I'll multiply it. Instead of dx over dt, I'll multiply by dt over dx. So what do you notice? Now check the left hand side and the right hand side. If it's not equal, it means it's wrong. So I've got my dy on the top dx in the bottom here you can see dt and dt cancel so i've got dy on the top dx in the bottom the left must equal to the right so what is my dy over dt it is 2 times sec t all squared times tan t so here we are times dt over dx now this is dx over dt so when you want to invert make sure you have a denominator a proper fraction when you invert it must have a numerator and one denominator so my denominator here is just one you okay, over that so when you invert it it will be one divided by sec square t and it seems to work out nicely here which is sec squared and sec squared will cancel, you end up with 2 tan t, that is my dy over dx, let me make sure I didn't copy down the wrong question like last time right, the parametric equations of a curve are given, uh, given as that and that determine dy over dx, so it's only first derivative so what must we do now? just one more thing, so now at the points t is equal to pi over 3 dy over dx is equal to we know that it's 2 tan t which is going to be 2 tan and now we are replacing t with pi over 3 so you calculate the ingredient calculator in radians. So you can go shift mode radians so if you avoid any silly mistakes. Why calculator in radians? Because this is trigonometry. Whenever you have a trig function, make sure your angle here is in radians. Okay, not in degrees. You can work it out in degrees for this one, but there are other examples where it gets too complicated to go and convert each one individually. So what you will do is, you will change your calculator to radians, so you go shift mode, radians, and then you just do it as it is. Right, but if you want to, for extra information, this is actually 180 divided by 3, which is 60 degrees, and at 60 degrees is a special angle. 10 is opposite of adjacent y over x which is square root 3 over 1 square root 3, am I right?
So that's going to equal to 2 times square root 3. So 2 root 3 without a calculator. Now give me that answer on and up to 3 decimal places. What's it? 3, 4, 6, 4. These are parametric equations. Now, while we're on this example here, while we're on this, okay, we have a few minutes left. What happens if you were asked to find the second derivative? Which sometimes it's asked in the exam. Let's just do it for the sake of practicing. So, this, since this is like a few days before, maybe like just over a week before the N6 final exam. So let's do a second derivative. Um, so my second derivative. The second derivative is going to be d squared y all over dx squared. That is the second derivative. First derivative is this. So remember this was my first derivative. So how do we evaluate, how do we work out the second derivative? So now we need to understand how was this, how did, how did this come about? So d squared y over dx squared, first of all, we worked out our first derivative. What was our first derivative? Our first derivative was dy over dx. That's what it was. Now, what will we do here? We will differentiate this one more time. That means you need to find d over dx of dy over dx. That means differentiate your answer with respect to x one more time. Check, you, you, you get your d squared on the top, you get your dx squared in the bottom. Can you see that? Now, let's, we've got d over dx. What was my dy over dx? I'm not talking about the numerical solution. This is the numerical solution at a specific point. Here is our dy over dx. Can you see that? Yes. Our dy over dx here was 2 tan t. We got a problem now. The problem here is that we need to differentiate 2 tan t. But this is not d over dt. But we need to differentiate with respect to t. We've got a problem. Now we need to go back to our N5 work. Okay. Our N5 work on implicit differentiation. So, nothing too difficult. It's just a simple thing to write down. This is a t here. So therefore, I need to change this to d over dt. Why? Because this is a t, but remember, originally, it was an x there. Okay, so, basically what's happening here, implicit differentiation. You've got d over dx, which is going to equal to d over dt times dt over dx. This is implicit differentiation. Watch it. d over dx is what we want. Right. And d over dx is exactly what we're getting here on the right hand side. Look at it, dt and dt. Cancel. This is implicit differentiation. So therefore, you replace d over dx with d over dt times dt over dx. Now, there's no confusion here. It's still d on the top, it's still dx in the bottom because dt and dt cancel. Alright, so now. Simple thing to do. What is the derivative of 2 tan t? The derivative of tan is going to be sec squared of t times the derivative of t, which is 1. And don't forget, there's also this part here. Where, where do we get this from? We go back. This is dt over dx. Where is dt over dx? There's dx over dt. Remember that? We want dt over dx. So therefore, it's going to be 1 over sec squared t 
18 and these two cancel so I end up with just 2 so nice question it works out nicely you can see right so that will be all for today